Hey there, I'm Lisa Nevin Kelly here for Beachcation.com, and in today's class I'm going to teach you how to take a pre-made bezel cup and solder it to a blank that maybe you've stamped on and I'm also going to show you how to solder it to a ring <laughs> and how to take an earring post and solder that on. So a couple different projects here. From there we're going to show you how to pop a stone in and how to set that bezel. So lots of information, lots of design ideas here, but I really encourage you, if you're new to this, to watch a soldering class first. We've got lots on our site or on our YouTube, and maybe pick up some of the copper pre-made bezel cups because they're really inexpensive, and you can practice soldering those on and setting stones and all that without wasting money while you're learning the technique. Sound good? All right, thanks so much for joining, and let's get started. first things that you need to consider is the height of your stone as opposed to the height of the wall of your bezel cup. So where these bezel cups are calibrated, these are, well, they're measured at four millimeters. This one here and this one that I've already soldered or this one over here is three millimeters. That's a diameter of the cup. And most stones that you find are calibrated to the same measurements, like this carnelian here is four millimeters. Um, these Swarovski crystals are 2.6. I would prefer to have three millimeter or four millimeter with me because these are kind of hard to set because of their size. Since they're smaller, they get a little wobbly in there, but we're gonna cover that in a minute. But what we're considering now is, let's use, for instance, this uh, carnelian. So even though that is officially four millimeters, yes, it will fit in this cup, but what we don't know is how tall the stone is and how tall the cup is. You see how the cup is really, really tall and it's taller than the cabochon, the little baby carnelian there? Well, that's gonna be a little tall to set. The, the metal's gonna to have to come way in and it's just gonna be a pain. So in this case, you're gonna to wanna to bring the wall of the bezel down a little bit. And you can bring it down to where the stone starts to taper. Because as long as that wall hugs right there, everybody is gonna be nice and secure. So there's a couple of ways that you can take down the wall of the bezel cup. You can file it with a file. Make sure you're filing nice and flat and filing at different angles so that you're not accidentally applying too much pressure like sideways or forward or back and then essentially not filing down the cup evenly. So one way you can do this is on sandpaper. This is a 400 grit and I just hold the cup under my finger and do little circles. And I'm basically bringing down that wall, trying to keep the pressure on the cup evenly. I go the other direction, go into figure eight, and that's just to make sure again that you're getting the whole wall uh, sort of filed down evenly. So see how that's come down a little bit. Do that for a little while. You can move to a finer grit. I would move down a couple of grits. I've sort of jumped a few here just for the sake of being quick, just to show you the plan. So see that, how that wall's come down. And once you know you run out of grit there, you need to move to a different part of the paper that still has its coarseness. And bring it down too, as far as you want. One thing I want to caution you is occasionally I have brought the wall down after I solder it. But after you solder on the bezel cup, it's really, really soft because you basically just annealed it. So if you come in with a harsh file like this and start to file it, you could totally distort the cup. So just make sure you're being really, really careful if that's the case. Once you have the cup all set, and you think it's gonna fit perfectly, you need to test it. Now if I take the stone and pop it in there, it's gonna get stuck, and I'm not gonna be able to get it out if I need to pull it out to file it some more. So there's a couple things I can do. This one, I know that's a 2.6 and this is a three mil, so if I pop that guy in there and it's not right, I can just, it'll just come right out. See, cause that's, the bezel cup is a lot bigger. But for this one, you can do a variety of things. You can lay a piece of string or dental floss in the cup, put, which is what we're gonna do, put the stone right on top of it so we have something to pull it out with. Or you can drill a hole in the cup so that if you put the stone in, you have a hole to 
poke it out with, with maybe a piece of hard wire. Just be cautioned that if you do do that, you need to make sure you take away any burr on the back caused from drilling it out or any burr in the middle or the inside of the cup caused by drilling it out because those burrs will either make your stone sit off center or not give you a nice flat solder spot. The other thing too is you're not going to want to drill a hole and then put a transparent stone in. This one is sort of transparent but I think it would be fine but if you put like a moonstone or a citrine or rose quartz in there you'd be able to see right through the stone and you'd be able to see that hole. So in that case I would maybe cut out a piece of sterling, punch out the exact size, lay it in there to cover the hole visually and then put your stone in. But remember if you do that it's going to raise it up so you have to keep in mind all those factors when you bring them down the wall of the cup to fit the stone. To test if this stone um, fits in this cup, which I'm pretty sure it will fit diameter wise, it's the height that I'm concerned about now, I'm going to put this piece of dental floss right over the cup so that I have something to pull the stone out with. And I'm just going to place it right over that. This dental floss is very, very thin, so it's not going to really adjust how this fits. Okay, it's nice and set in there. I've pushed down really, really hard. And let's take a look here. So I want to look at the profile like that. Let me turn it for you. There we go. And you can see here that it's poking up just fine. I think I could probably bring the wall down a little bit, but I think I'm going to be able to bezel set this really nicely and it's going to give it a nice hug. And now I need to pop it out. So I'm just going to pull on the dental floss, pop it out. Okay, let's move on to soldering. I'm all set up to solder. Let me show you what I'm working with. Here's my torch. I'm going to use the Max Flame. I've got a third hand. I've got cross lock tweezers. My charcoal block that's on a rotating pan. We also sell these rotating pans. Safety goggles, of course. Easy solder wire, which is the softest that I've hammered flat. I'm going to cut it into little pallions. I've got my quench cup over here, cutters to cut the solder, and my solder pick. I'm also going to be working with Coopernil flux. I'm going to show you how to solder a couple of things an ear post onto a bezel cup, how to solder a bezel cup just onto a plain old blank, and how to solder a bezel cup onto a ring. But let's first start with the blank. I've already stamped it. I like to get the stamping and the hole punch and everything ready before soldering it on. And I'm going to cut a couple pallions of easy solder wire. And I am going to just cut a couple pieces off and just keep them on the side here for me to pick up and place where I need them. Where'd that guy go? There it is. Now with this project, you want just the perfect amount. You don't want too much solder to flow out from under your bezel cup or it makes a mess. In fact, that's why I don't use paste solder for this project. I prefer to use the flat pallions. What it's, what's going to happen is I'm going to place this pallion right where I want it, place the solder cup right on top of it. And what's great is when it's soldered, the pallion melts and it just goes boop and it settles and then you know that it's soldered. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do besides put on my safety goggles is I'm going to coat everything with this Coopernail Flux. Uh, this is going to protect it from the oxides, the copper oxides that come up, the fire scale that could happen if you overdid it. And it's also going to give me some flux so that the solder will flow. So I'm going to turn on my torch. And for this, you just heat up the metal, heat, 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 spray, spray. And we're going to cover it with like a nice white coating. That looks awesome. Get on that bezel too. Okay, turn off my torch. Now what happens is I've lost with the coating of the flux. I can't really see where my bezel is going to go. And that's why I forgot to point out, and it's a little too late to wipe it off and show you now, but I had hammered or stamped in a little period stamp right where I want the bezel to go. Um, in hopes that I can still see it, and I kind of can. You may not be able to on camera, but I can. And I'm going to pick up a little piece of flux here. I mean, solder, and place it right where I want to solder the dude on. Maybe it's a dude. Maybe it's a chick. I don't know. 
but it's getting soldered. Okay, I'm just going to knock off some of that the brick that comes off sometimes. Don't worry too much about that. All right, so now with the little finagling, take your time here. You want to make sure this is perfect. Uh, make sure that this is set exactly where you want it to be and make sure the solder is set there too. I'm noticing that you can't see from the camera, but my blank is up on a little piece of chipped off charcoal. So it's kind of tilting to the side, which when my solder flows, that's better. It will go downhill, the whole bezel. <laughs> and I don't mean figuratively, I mean literally, it will just slide right off. Okay, that looks great. Another reason I like this pan is I can turn it and look at it from all angles and I see that this is still kind of uphill. Let's work on that. There we go. That's better. Yeah, this looks great. Okay, so keep in mind this bezel cut is super, super thin and it's fine silver. You can also use, work with sterling, but it's a really thin wall and if you get crazy with your torch, you can melt it. So when I come in with the torch, I'm gonna to be really, really careful. I'm gonna keep the flame on the outside of the brick and let the residual heat sort of heat up my piece and eventually flow the solder. I might come in a little bit and brush along the, the bezel cup and right underneath it, but I'm definitely not like, <sighs> like concentrating right on that because that will just completely melt. All right, so we've zoomed in for you. I'm gonna turn on my torch and holding my torch in my left hand and my solder pick in my right hand in case anything crazy happens. So get here, I like this angle. So I'm heating the outside of the piece. This should happen pretty quick. My blank is about 24 gauge, maybe 22, I don't remember. And again, the solder, or sorry, the bezel cup is really thin. So what we're looking for is that little settle of the cup and the flash of solder. You see the cup just sat a little bit. I'm going to tap it down and look at it from all angles here. I want to pull the solder through. That looks perfect. I'm going to give it a second to rest before I throw it in the quench cup. All right, it's nice and soldered on. Everybody's happy. I'm gonna throw it in the pickle and we'll move on to setting a post onto a bezel cup. Okay, I've got my bezel cup face down on the charcoal block and I've got the ear post in my third hand. Now I was just gonna change something. I figured I would do it on camera to show you guys. I was just getting set up and realized that <laughs> The backing on this post is four millimeters and the bezel cup is four millimeters. So I'm gonna have to put it, solder it on there absolutely perfectly in order to get it to look good. And I don't, not feeling that perfect today. <laughs> so I'm gonna swap it out for a littler post. See that guy? So I'm more likely to be able to get that centered right on there. Okay, before we do that, let me zoom out to show you what we've got going here. As I showed you, I've got the ear post in the third hand. I've got the third hand on my bench block for the sole purpose of raising it up a little bit so that I can lay this down perpendicular right on top of the post. You don't want it at any sort of angle. And I'm going to now flux both the post and the bezel cup. All right. Fire up my torch. A little bit of heat, a little bit of heat. Spits, spits, spits. I'm actually going to turn this so I can get the a little bit of this on there. Okay, the flex is set. I'm going to turn my torch off and get a piece of solder. Okay, there we go. Bam, right in the middle. I'm gonna bring this right on top of it. Aisha showed me a trick, a trick a while ago where place it just lower than the bezel cup so that when you go ahead and place it on the bezel cup, you have really good tension and it's pushing it down. So again, once the solder flows, 
this ear post will settle. Go boop, and then you know it's set. I'm looking at it from left and right to make sure that everybody is set and it looks great. So I'm going to turn on my torch and this is going to go pretty quick. Just settled. I see a little flash. All right, looking good. I'm gonna toss this oh, nice and solder there. I'm gonna toss it into the quench cup. Now I will get the ring set up. All right, before we solder these two together, I want to point something out to you. A ring is curved, and the back of a bezel cup is flat. So there's only gonna be a tiny little spot where they touch and that's going to be your only i'm holding it here in the cross lock tweezers i hope you can see that that's going to be your only spot to get a nice solder join it's actually not that bad with this little three millimeter guy which is what i'm going to be soldering on but if it was a wider one like a four mil or six mil you're going to want to try to shape the cup or create a flat spot on your ring so you can do a couple things you can create a flat spot by coming in with a file and file softly. I would use a thinner file actually. This is going to give me too big of a flat spot and then you're going to see it. But file, file, file till you get a flat spot. Or what I've done before is take the bezel cup, put it in a ring bending nylon jaw pliers, which I don't have here, and give it a little squeeze and it kind of shapes the bezel cup a little bit. You're going to have to test your stone though to make sure it didn't sh like misshape it to a point where your stone doesn't fit anymore. Or you can come in with your nylon jaw pliers. I tried it with just my Lindstrom chain nose and it just kind of marred it up too much. But I'm gonna come in and give it a little squeeze and that is gonna create a flat spot. See that? Now that likely is going to change the size of your ring, but not drastically. After we solder on this bezel cup, we can put it back on the ring mandrel and reshape it. It's actually gonna be fine. This isn't as flat, you know, it's not a drastic flat spot where the ring is gonna look weird, but what's, what it's gonna do is give a spot to get a nice flat against flat solder joint with your bezel cup. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the third hand. I'm gonna bring it down kind of low. What you wanna make sure is that it is very level. Because if you go and you put your bezel cup on there and it's not level, again, once the solder flows, it could slide right off. And I've definitely had that happen. So first things first, we're gonna flux it up. Off. Now, just like with the other pieces, I'm going to grab a little piece of solder. I actually would normally have these on the table and pick it up with my finger and then pick it up from my finger with the tweezers. But for some reason, I decided to put it here and make it harder on myself and messier. There we go. dropped it. That's awesome. That's why you have more than one. This guy is a little big. This one actually was meant to be. It's perfect. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is turn it. It's kind of a different angle than what you guys can see on the camera, but I'm looking at it so that I'm looking down the hole of the ring to make sure that the solder is exactly centered, which it wasn't, but it is now. Now I'm going to pick up the bezel cup and place it. Now you'd think this would be a good reason to use paste solder because it's nice and sticky or handy flux. Handy flux would be great because it's sticky. It can kind of stick it in place. But the paste solder I felt made a little bit of a mess. 
So again, I'm looking at down this way and down this way. It's actually really good. That's pretty good placement. I want to make sure it's not too far over to one side. That's good. And we'll zoom in here. And again, what we're looking for is a little drop. Little, watching that bezel cup settle. It's kind of hard to see with the camera. You know what, I'm gonna pause for a sec and put the camera at a different angle and see if that helps. Ah, uh, much better. So now you can see kind of almost right under the bezel, but you'll be able to see it settle better. And I want to point out that a third hand will act as a heat sink. It's going to like want to take all that heat. So I'm holding the smallest part of the ring that I can. So it's not, you know, really bulky holding it and sucking the heat out. But I will be hitting the tweezers a little bit with the torch to keep it warm as well. And kind of on the outside and just let that heat go around the ring. I'm going to hit the ring a little bit now. The ring's pretty thick, so we want to make sure that it heats up enough to match the temperature on the bezel and everybody settles happily, happily ever after. I can tell by the sound of my torch that the gas is running out, so this better hurry. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. There it goes, there it goes. Oh, perfect. I'm gonna just, I was not prepared with my tweezers, I mean with my pick, and it settled a little to the left. Can you hear my torch? I'm having to get really, really close. It's like almost dead. There we go. Okay, good. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna turn this off, quench, and refill the torch. Okay, so here's the ring. It's soldered really nicely, and it's a little misshapen. That's totally fine. It's so soft now that I can easily reshape it on the ring mandrel. I will just pop it on there, and probably pulling it down with my hand, uh, pulling it down the width of the ring mandrel will reshape it perfectly. Uh, here's the other piece that we soldered on. Here's the post. Try to get a little closer for you. So all three of these are gonna get put in the pickle to clean them up, and then we're gonna set some stones. Before you start setting the stones in some of the pieces that we just made, I encourage you to make a little copper practice piece. So this was just a blank that was a scrap piece of copper and I got some copper bezel cups and just soldered them right on. The copper bezel cups need a little bit of filing at the top, they come a little rough, but they're inexpensive and great to practice with. So I would say solder a bunch of those guys on and then practice setting the stones like I'm about to show you. You can see I didn't even bother to pickle this because this is just practice piece. So I'm gonna practice by putting this little 2.6 millimeter Swarovski flat back crystal into this bezel and practice uh, setting it. But you can see, maybe if I tilt it a little, that it's pretty short compared to the wall of the bezel. So instead of bringing the bezel wall down, I'm gonna put a lift inside of that cup so that it brings this up a little bit. Let me show you how I do that now. So you may need to experiment with um, what size something you need to put in this bezel to lift this stone up. I realized after doing this many times that 18 gauge metal is perfect. That's exactly the one millimeter height that I need for this stone to sit in the right place. So that's how I was able to do these two. And that just came from a little bit of experimentation, but I like to put metal in there that's nice and flat so that it continues with the flat surface for this guy to sit on. So what I do is take my screw down hole punch, hole punch and use the larger end and it's fits perfect in there. So let me just show you. I'm just gonna punch out a piece of this 18 gauge um, aluminum scrap, just on one of the plain spots where it's not stamped and distorted. And once I feel that punch loosen up, that means I have gone through, unscrew it. Okay. 
Come on, there we go. And oftentimes the little piece that you're looking for is stuck in the hole, so then you just screw it down to pop it out. There we go. All right, so that little piece I am going to put in here, put that guy on top of it, and then test it. Um, let me do that here with my chain nose. Let's say grab it easily. And by test it, I mean just look at it for a visual. All right. So what you're looking for here is you want to make sure that the walls of the bezel come up and over your stone right where it tapers, your stone or in this case your crystal, so that you can bring the walls in to give it a nice tight hug to hold it in place. Not too much metal poking up, but for sure enough to come up and over the edge. And that looks about perfect. That's perfect with my little lift in there. Now if this stone fit perfect in there and didn't have any sort of wobble, see how this can move back and forth in there, then you can go ahead and set it. But because this is smaller, again this is a 3 millimeter uh, bezel cup and this is 2.6 millimeter crystal. Now why is that? That's because that's what we sell. So that's what I happen to have on hand. So I'm going to turn this guy upside down to dump them out and I'm going to place a tiny bit of glue in there and let everything set. So make sure you have a tissue on hand because this comes out can, uh, in a way that can be a little bit messy and you want to wipe off the glue before you put the lid back on. So I'm just going to come in and put a teeny bit of glue there. That's perfect. I'll start by picking this guy up and dropping him in, making sure it's centered. There we go. And now a teeny bit of glue right there, not too much, otherwise it will kind of come up and over the stone. Place that in there nicely. And I'm going to turn so I can make sure that it is centered. Look at it from the bird's eye view and that looks great. I'm going to let that sit and dry while I show you how to set bezels where you don't have to do this gluing. All right, here's a ring that we're about to uh, set a stone in. And you can do it the traditional way where you put the stone in and you use like a burnishing tool or something and sort of start to bring the bezel down. You may start with north, south, west, east, and then burnish, 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 burnish all the way around like you would do with a larger bezel. That will definitely work, but it's kind of a pain. So let me introduce you to your new best friend and mine, the bezel setting punch set. <laughs> also called a bezel burnisher, burnisher set. So what happens here is this is super cool. These are all different size little burnisher uh, punches, I guess you could call them, and they are tapered down inside so that if you were to take one of these and run it over a bezel, it's gonna bring the bezel in. So let me give you a little bit of a close up here on this guy. So you see how it's cone shaped in there? So if this were to push down on something, it would push it in and they work great. So the idea here is to put it in the little holder. It's just got a chuck like anything else. You tighten it down. Then you have a handle to work with if you're going to do it by hand. Sometimes people also hit it with a hammer, which you can do. Um, I wouldn't use a really heavy hammer, but maybe a rawhide or a plastic mallet. You can do it on the handle, or if you don't want to mess up your handle, you can just hit the back here. Doot, doot, doot. It's really, really nice and handy, especially for, the, especially for these teeny tiny little bezels that we're going to be working with. So let's start by bringing in the piece that we soldered on a blank. All right, I'm going to start by putting this little carnelian guy right in there. I like to just put it on my finger and then I can grasp it and place it into the bezel. And I'd already checked to make sure that this bezel was the right height. That looks great. I'm just looking at it from all the different angles. And then I'm going to pick the correct size little bezel setter here. Now for this one, I'm going to go bigger than 
four millimeters. I mean, the stone is four millimeters, but that's a little too exact. You wanna go a little bit bigger. I'm gonna place it right on top and then start to rock it around. Let's see what's happening in there. It's starting to pull it down around. Now, depending on how hard your stone is, you can push down really, really hard. Hopefully the size is right where you're not actually gonna hit your stone. Now I think I can move down. I just brought the edges in a little bit. Now I can move down to a slightly smaller one. That one was a five millimeter. And then let's come a little bit lower. There we go. Sorry, you can't see with my hand, but <laughs> I'll try to come from the side. But I'm coming right down on top, putting down some pressure. Bringing that in. That is looking good so far. Okay, like I said before, you can also come in and use a light hammer to... If you have a really sensitive stone, you need to be really careful with this. I've definitely cracked crystals. And make sure you're doing it evenly so you don't bring in one side more than the other. And that sure did the trick. That looks nice. Let me get a little close up for you. It's in there nice and snug. It's definitely not coming out. Look at it from all angles, how it just formed really evenly around the stone. Remember our little practice piece? Well, it is all dry now. Nothing's coming out. This is the one right here that hasn't been set yet. So this is practice, right? I've got a three millimeter cup, again, with a 2.6 millimeter flat back crystal in it. And I've grabbed the four millimeter little bezel setter here. And I'm gonna try to just softly bring it down with my hand. And that's doing a pretty good job, actually. I can tap lightly, although be careful with the crystals. And that brought it down even more. It's looking pretty good. Let me just move to a smaller little bezel punch. Uh-oh, which one was I on? Here you go. <laughs> coming in. It looks like when I glued it, maybe I was a little off center. So that's why you see a little opening spot there. Um, I can practice again on another one, of course, or try to hit it a little harder and see if this will grasp it. I'm going to go back to the slightly bigger one, back to the four mil. I'm going to see if this will grasp that side and push it in without cracking my crystal. That's the key here. See the fact that this goes almost all the way down it's kind of showing me that if I hit that, I may crack my crystal if I hit it too hard. But let's try just on this side. Okay, that's a little bit. And we'll move back to the three and a half. all set in there. Now if you have a wonky side like looks like on my practice piece here, actually I'm really happy with that, but it's a little bit wonky over here. I can actually come in with a bezel pusher and, and burnish, 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 push, push that guy in, but that looks really nice. So setting a stone in a little bezel that's on an ear post like this is kind of awkward. So what I have here is a table vise. And we sell these table vices. They're a perfect little size. And they, this guy is clamped to my table. They come with rubber jaw covers, but when I pulled this out, it was missing one. I'm not sure why. So I just taped on really, really thick leather, which works great. I actually ended up finding the other one later, but I like the leather, so I'm sticking with it. So you can just put it right in here. Let's get it closed a little bit. 
And you see there's actually a little groove right there. You want to stay away from that right in there and tighten it down. Now you can see that if I had something smaller, it would just continue to keep sliding down. So if that's the case, let me show you a little trick. I just have a blank here that has a hole in it. It's a piece of scrap metal that I just put a hole in and you can go like this and then put it down and it gives you kind of a plate to work against. Nice little trick. Okay, nice and tight, good. So I've got here a little carnelian four millimeter stone that's gonna go right into my four millimeter bezel. There it goes. Press down nice and hard and make sure that when you do the second one, it's at the same height. Sometimes you, know, you may not press down hard enough and they'll be uneven. All right, so that looks good. So I'm gonna grab the five millimeter little bezel setter here for my four mil because I want it a little bigger to start with. And this time I'm not gonna use the handle, I'm just gonna tap, tap, tap. Making sure I'm holding it really straight or rocking it around as I do it. And that is looking really good. It's pulling down the sides, perfect. Let's see here. So there we go, it, it looks great. I actually wanna put it back in and go a little bit smaller than that five mil. Maybe go down to the 4.5 to burnish it just a little bit more on the edges. All right, now let's move on to setting a stone into the ring. Remember when we first started this ring, we made a flat spot, so we had somewhere flat for the flat back of our bezel cup to solder to. And then now is the time where we can go ahead and shape it back to, to round. So you could come in, let's see if this is gonna work, this is just a theory, and slightly squeeze here to pull it back, so I'm kind of pulling that back out, you see that? That worked nicely. Or, because it was just soldered, it's really, really soft. So I'm just gonna put it back on the ring mandrel. And yes, I could come in with a mallet and tap it down, but I'm pretty sure I can just do it with my hand. I'm trying hard not to grab the bezel, because I don't wanna distort it. It looks like this part's giving me a little trouble, so I'm gonna come in with my mallet and tap that down. Same on this side. Being oh so careful not to hit my bezel. There we go. Oh yeah, that's much better. Let me bring it up close so you can see. Yeah, that's much better shape. So this ring, you could probably just put in a ring clamp and then bezel set it from there. It's a little easier to hold, it's a little bit bigger. But since I had the vise here, I just went ahead and placed it there. And I'm going to first put my stone in. This time I'm gonna use a little moonstone. Three millimeter stone going into the three millimeter bezel. Like so, toss them down in there. And there we go. I'm looking from all angles, make sure he's centered. Needs to go over a little bit. Not centered per se, but you wanna make sure one side did not go down more than the other. That looks pretty good. All right. So since this is a three millimeter bezel cup, I'm gonna start with a little bit bigger than three mil, maybe the 3.5. And I'm just going to place it lightly on top here. You know what? That's a, still a little bit uh, small. I'm going to swap it out. You can come down to the smaller size as soon as the walls have been brought in a little bit. There we go. That's better. 
So here, let me get my hand out of the way, it's a little shadowed, but I'm pressing down on top while giving it tiny little curls and you can continue that way or if you're not worried about really injuring your stone, come in and tap lightly. I'm really, really tapping lightly and with a light hammer. But it did a great job. Got a little dirt there. Let me go a little bit smaller and I think it can bring it in even more. What it's doing too is burnishing it so it gives it a nice polished look. Now I need to hold it tight enough in this vise so that the whole thing doesn't push down through. You can see it's sort of sinking, but you also don't want to hold it so tight that you end up distorting your ring. Oops, come back here. All right, let me take a look here. Oh, that looks really nice. Let's get up close for you. So that looks really nice. Everything is set perfectly. And I distorted the ring a teeny, teeny bit while I was doing that. So I'm just going to go ahead and place it back on. It's fine that the stone is already set. And tap, tap, tap. While it's here, I'm going to just tap away to harden it so I don't accidentally distort it again. <laughs> now this I'm doing not to size it, so I don't want to be pushing it up. I'm just doing it to harden it. Do not hit the bezel. And there we go. I just polished it up a little bit and it looks so nice. Now if you did want to have some stamping on your ring, I would definitely stamp first. I think it's easier to do that than to stamp now with this pesky bezel in the way. You know, possibly even easier than a clamp is go ahead and use your ring mandrel. Slide your ring directly on here. This one's already set, but even if it wasn't set yet. And then you can just hold it in your hand and come in with your bezel setter and really push and spin right here. You get good resistance. This might even be easier than holding it in the clamp, but I'll leave that in there for an option for you. But this is great because you're really definitely not going to distort your ring when you shape the bezel because it's being supported by the, straight, the steel mandrel. So you can just come in and put as much pressure as you need. And that looks great. So that's it. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you learned lots. And remember, if you're going to be setting something that's got some wiggle room in there, like how I was setting a 2.6 millimeter flatback crystal in a three millimeter cup. And again, the only reason I did that is because that's what I had on hand. And I figured it's a good learning opportunity to, for you to see how to set something that doesn't fit perfectly. And make sure you glue it and glue it centered so that when you do pull the walls into the bezel, it stays put centered and then you will be a-okay. Now, if you had too much space in there, like I was trying to set a 1.5 millimeter thing in a three millimeter cup, that probably wouldn't work very well. So I don't recommend that. <laughs> and hey, if you're watching this on YouTube, please leave us a comment below and we will get back to you. Questions, toss them down there. If you like the information here, maybe consider giving us a thumbs up. And if you want to learn more from us and be the first to know when we release classes and videos and product videos and all that fun stuff, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Thanks so much for coming.